Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. I have another golf ball review for you today, and we are reviewing the Seed SD05 model, also kind of known as the Pro Soft model. Let's dive right in. All right, so I've had a ton of requests uh, really over the last couple of years, but uh, definitely a lot lately, uh, mainly from overseas uh, viewers, but there have been some American ones too that have been asking me about the seed golf balls. You know, on this channel, we test a lot of direct to consumer where we're trying to find the best value. And this is actually a major player in the game. Um, a lot of people would consider them even top five from what I've read, what I've seen. Uh, so it's only right that we finally do a review. Now I am working on getting the rest of the lineup as well from seed. They do make a variety of golf balls. Uh, uh, but the one I really want to focus on is the Pro Soft one because I do have one here ready to be reviewed and ready to go, but also because it, it, I do tend to do a lot better with those types of balls. I tend to do better with the Pro Soft model, you know, whether it's with Vice or whether it's with a Taylor Made Callaway, whatever. It's usually their more value tour ball. That's what I end up liking a little bit better because they're softer, they're more forgiving on miss hits. Uh, they end up being for that slow to mid fast swinging crowd. They like, usually cover a wide variety. So I just think this is a good place to start. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive in. Let's of course start with the price point. Now most of seed balls as far as their pro line come in at $35 a dozen uh, but you do have some options here. So if you want to just buy one dozen to try them out you know, unfortunately, the price is going to kind of beat you up a little bit because by the time you pay for shipping and everything, you're looking probably north of 40 bucks. Uh, however, they do have some options such as a subscription service where you can get the dozen for $29. And then essentially you can choose either one month, two month or three month for them to send you a new box. So if you end up liking the ball and you end up liking how it is, you could just say, hey, I want a box every three months and you only pay $29, which for a three piece urethane golf ball, is very good. The other thing that Seed does is they offer buying in bulk, which a lot of these direct-to-consumer companies do. It's a really smart thing to do, um, and essentially it's no different here. So it's like 35 a dozen if you want one, 34 if you want two, 33 if you want three, and then once you get to the 32 for four range, they also provide free shipping. So that's where you can really, if you end up liking the Seed balls, you can just say, hey, I'm gonna order them for the season, kind of the way Vice does, uh, the way Snell does, um, things like that. Basically, if you just wanna order for the season, you order them and you save a bunch of money. So they offer a variety of options I like that a lot. Let's dive into the look of the golf ball, the design of it. So as you can see their logo there, it is interesting. It is different. Um, it's not generic in any way. That, that definitely stands out. If you recognize that and you see it and you play it a couple times, you'll never forget that logo. So it is really unique. Um, the one there is nice and big. Let's come around on the side here to the alignment tool. Um, I do like that it is a thick black line. It says Seed SD05 to let you know what the golf ball is. I do wish the alignment tool was a little thicker. I prefer them a little thicker just because that way I can see them better. It's hard to see this, especially, I mean, I'm close to the camera and you can see it pretty well, but when you're over the ball and it's rolling, it's hard to tell for feedback if you actually got a straight shot or not. It's a little more difficult. So um, I wish that was a little bigger. As far as the cover, it feels good, actually. It feels like a pretty much a medium level of thickness around there for the polyurethane coating. And other than that, it does look pretty professional. It doesn't look cheap. It doesn't look, uh, you know, like you bought it from Walmart. You know, it, it looks like actually legit, like it's a player in the game. So let's go ahead and get out to the chipping and putting green. Let's see how it does around there. All right, so seed here, open the face a little bit. Crisp, crisp. Oh, it just dove right over the hole. A little too firm on that, but I will say it had some reaction. It had some decent spin. Let's try it again. Very nice. Um, it actually, you know, I expected it to have a little more spin. It does have a, a decent amount of checkup, but it's not in the top tier of what I've been testing lately. I've been testing a lot of golf balls that have been stopping on a dime. Not the case here. It does have just a little bit of checkup and then a pretty firm release. Let me see if I can kind of get it. Now that wasn't too bad, but that was very low and very spinny. Really low, really spinny. See, just... That, that actually was hit really crisp. You could probably hear it, but it just released really firm. Let me try to get this golf ball to go either left or right. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open the face quite a bit. Hit a cut here. Wow, get in the hole. Mm. Crispy, crispy. Okay, so now try to get one to go left here. Close the face. Yeah, just, you know, it's kind of hit and miss. And of course, I'm not a perfect golfer, let's be honest, but it is kind of hit and miss. And my big thing is, is that even on nice crisp hits where you can hear it, how that loudness, 
it just doesn't stop like a lot of the other golf balls I've been testing have. All right, let's see how this feels here. Got the mallet putter first. Nice thick mallet putter here. Okay, little chug effect, get in the hole. Boom, oh, it just had too much speed on it. Okay, so yeah, it had a little bit of a click there. Uh, as far as feel, I didn't really feel it that much, to be honest. It's, it's a softer golf ball. This is a heavy club. Yeah, it's pretty dead coming off the club. Oh, put your shadow on it, man. Yeah, I mean, I'd say that the roll isn't 100% true. It's like a 9 out of 10. It's really good. I would feel comfortable putting with it. Absolutely. I mean, balance could be maybe just a little off, but from what I'm seeing, it's actually rolling pretty decent. Yeah, that was a good strike. I just had way too much on it. The blade putter. Huh, not bad. Okay, so that one, I mean, I felt it more in my hands, for sure I felt it, but as far as the sound and everything, I thought it was the same. So it's really just, yeah, I can feel it now because it's not a heavy, uh, a heavy mallet in my hands anymore, so I can definitely feel it. Uh, it's not a good feeling. I don't like it at all. If I had a blade putter that I used regularly, um, I use the mallet regularly, obviously, but if I had a blade putter that I used regularly like this, I would not care for this feel at all, but, like I said, it has a pretty decent roll. Let's try to get one in the cup. Oh, come on. Hit it, hit it, hit it! Ah! Okay, so as far as the feel goes with all clubs across the 9-iron, 7-iron, 5-hybrid driver, um, it feels pretty good. You know, it feels like that pro soft type of model that, like I was saying at the beginning of this video, uh, usually these golf models have a lot of spring to them. You know, they're soft. They don't offer a ton of feedback because, you know, golf balls like this, I can usually hit off the toe and not lose a lot of yards because there's a soft enough compression to where even little miss hits still compress the golf ball at least 95%. So with that being said, I'm not going to lose a ton of yardage, but I for, I, I sacrifice that tour level feedback that a lot of really advanced players want. Um, but if you're one of these average guys, you know, like me, like you, like a lot of people who watch this, I've gotten a ton of comments lately over the Vice Pro Air. Everyone's talking about how they just love it. They love how far it goes. They love the feel. That's the type of feel I'm talking about. This one has a very similar feel, so it's going to be in that ballpark. So let's get into these numbers. Let's start with the 50-yard pitch, and we're going to do backspin, of course, 7,942, which is an excellent number. That's really, really good. Uh, it had a really good amount. Uh, everything was very, there was very little disparity in the spin amounts. It was either 75 to 8,500, always in there. 8,000 is definitely more of like the golden mark. If it hits 8,000, that's pretty incredible. But 7942 is pretty darn close, so that's definitely well above my average. So good start so far. Let's dive into the 9-iron, starting with the smash factor. Uh, that's a great smash factor at 1.28. 133.3, that's a gain of about 7 yards in distance uh, on both carry and total distance. 103 ball mile per hour speed, which is bonkers. I mean, that is amazing. That's a new record, so that's, that's going to break the record there. The previous record was the uh, Wright and Ditson at 102.5. So, uh, really phenomenal there. You know, if you look at the swing speed, it's it's not very much faster than what we've been doing lately. So that's just really good. 7,028. Again, really good spin number there. Anything over 7,000 with the nine iron super impressive because that golf ball is going to hit bounce a couple times and probably come back to where it landed so really i can't ask for much more than that um, a great smash smash factor um, really good launch there at 24.4 i mean the fact that i'm getting a little bit higher of a launch and getting backspin, but also getting distance. I mean, really, it's just like having your cake and eating it too. So that's a really great start with the nine and the 50 yard pitch. Let's keep it going with the seven iron, 1.37 on your smash factor, which is above average, 162.1. Again, gain seven yards with the seven iron. That's awesome. 163.5, again, another gain of seven yards. 115.7, which is an incredible ball speed. Um, it's not quite as much as I got with the Wright and Ditson, but boy, it's a close second place. 5,672, a little lower than average on spin, um, but you know, I, I get it. When you're gaining seven, eight yards in distance, you can't have too much spin, otherwise it's gonna come back. So that's still enough to stop on a green. No, no big deal there. And 18.7, which is just slightly above a mid launch. So, I mean, we're, we're continuing on. These numbers might not have been perfect like the nine iron were, but they're a nine out of 10. So I love to see that. Again, golf ball feels really springy. When you hit it in the center, you just know it. You know, it's one of those golf balls where when you hit it right, you just feel like it's going to travel a country mile, which is, if you get that joke, bravo for you. 
All right, let's dive into the five hybrid now, 1.33. So this is a, a lower smash factor number than I would have liked. I did lose six yards. I did lose six yards again on total distance. Uh, I lost about three mile per hour ball speed and I actually gained spin. That is a ton of spin. Uh, for the hybrid, which is interesting, and then 17.1, so that's kind of the culprit there. It launched really, really high. Um, my, my issue isn't as much with the smash factor. I know it's very important, uh, but when I look at these numbers, what it really tells me is, is one, no, I didn't get the greatest performance with the hybrid. I mean, the shots were good. You know, I made sure to have, have very comparable shots and delete any of the bad ones. Um, but that high launch along with that high spin, that definitely probably cost me my six yards. Um, when you combine those two things, I probably lost realistically four or five. And those numbers would have been very close to average, which with a hybrid, I don't mind it being average. I, I'm not trying to get 200 yards out of my five hybrid because my six, my six iron goes 170. I don't need a 30 yard gap. So I don't mind the distance numbers with the five hybrid as much. I just wonder about that spin. I'd have to get out to a course and test it because it could work in my favor. You never know. If I go out there and I hit it really well and I end up 175, 180 and it actually spins like it sticks the green real solid, could work out. That actually could be really good. So not the greatest of numbers, but you know what? I Out of all the clubs, if one of them had to be just average, the five hybrid is usually where I want that to be. All right, so let's go into the driver. That's gonna be the real tell test now. Let's see how the driver performs. Does it go back to being really good or does it follow suit and not have as much? 1.45, that is slightly above average on your smash factor. 225.9, yeah, slightly above average, good deal. 233.7, uh, slightly above average. And then yeah, same thing with the ball speed, slightly above average. 2681 on your spin. So it did spin a little high, kind of like the hybrid did, fair enough. Um, and then 16.4, like the hybrid, wanted to launch very, very high. Um, so that's kind of interesting there. So most of the time what I see with these um, pro soft golf balls is that they kind of work for the swing speeds of 80 mile an hour to 95, somewhere in there. I would almost guess based on the, what I'm seeing here is that it's probably more along the lines of 75, 80 mile an hour to 90 or 92. I know that's not a lot of difference, but I have like a 97, 98 mile an hour swing with the driver right now. And at this point, it felt like I was starting to over compress it. Just starting to, not, not a ton like a Wilson Duo or you know a 40, 50, 50, uh, 40, 50, 60 compression, excuse me. I'm not over compressing it to the point where I'm just letting it balloon up in the air. It's just slightly starting to overpress. And what that does usually is one, launches a little high in the air and two, has a lot more spin because I'm just compressing it so much. That would make me to believe that maybe this one in particular is a little too, um, it's meant for a slower swing speed than what I have, just slightly. So I'll get to more of that in just a second. Let's go ahead and touch on the durability. Looking at it, it's a little beat up. You know, I did put it through the ringer, so I definitely, you know, I survived. Feeling the golf ball, there's a couple scrapes here and there. So, I mean, I would call it like a 7 out of 10. It's very good. It's definitely going to get you through a round. Um, I don't foresee it going much more than that before I would start to wonder about the flight and I wonder about the putting and things like that. Um, it is what it is. I did go ahead and try to balance the golf ball. I know I've had some requests to do balancing of the golf ball. Like I said in the comments of this, I only sometimes have one or two of the golf balls and I only had two of this one. So I can't, I mean, I can test two of them, but like if you want to know how a whole dozen is, I just didn't have a whole dozen here. So um, with that being the case, it, it is what it is. I happened to get them from a buddy who bought a pack and so, you know, I had to just take the two, you know. Um, Overall though, seven out of 10, not bad with the durability. Um, final thoughts, you know, I'm impressed. I definitely want to try the rest of the seed line. I'm definitely gonna be doing an order to get more of the seed line. My big thing is uh, there's a couple of concerns, like I said, you know, with the ball, with the wood starting to launch a little higher, starting to spin more, I do think that it's going to be for around that 85, 90 crowd is ideal, um, which makes sense. There's, that's not a bad thing. So the idea behind this Pro Soft, Pro and Pro Plus model, which is, you know, Vice and a lot of companies are doing that now. Even Snell now this year came out with the 2.0, the 3.0 and the 4.0. Like everyone's trying to kind of market it that way in one way or another. And so the idea of the Pro Soft is supposed to be a tour-like golf ball, but for slower swing speeds. I don't consider 98 a slow swing speed anymore. When I was 92, that was like a mid-fast, but at this point, I'm like, I'm still probably in the mid-fast range, but I'm definitely not anywhere near just like slow mid. So I think that this golf ball actually is trying to fit into that slower swinger crowd, and I, I would guess it does a really good job. Nine iron, perfect 10 out of 10. Um, 50 yard pitch, amazing spin. Uh, seven iron, almost record breaking. So 
those tell me that yes, the golf ball is phenomenal. It has amazing speed, it has amazing stats, it spins really well. I can understand why a lot of you really like it. It, it makes sense, it performs, it, it knows what it's doing. Uh, but the fact that I did start to over compress those woods, it makes me wanna order the Pro, just the regular Pro, and try that bad boy out. And that's probably what I'll do next. So as always, keep watching to keep saving and keep learning. Until next time.